everybody man oh man welcome back to another episode of the crypto millionaire journey your boy the host the wolf of crypto coming to you from the parameters of my room uh man oh man i know y'all been watching this market yeah folks the market has been oh it's been one fun, entertaining, and very nerve wracking at times. And the reason why I say that is because, man, trying to just keep up with the price movement. Yes, if you don't know by now, Bitcoin has passed 10K on a couple of occasions. Some say it has to do with the Bitcoin halving. And I'll talk a little bit more on that. So it's creating a whole lot more FOMO. Um, But at the same time, I mean, it's been very bullish as well. If you've been looking at some of these charts, and I'm over here just trying to calculate, compute all this data, make sure I can, I mean, as you guys know, I watch the market almost I would say every day. Yeah, every day is another statement. Cause man, it's just a lot of opportunities, especially right now. Uh, as you guys know, that the halving is happening in May of 2020, so we're what two months away. And I got to say, uh, I'm at the point where I am literally recruiting trying to find all the best projects i can that i am passionate about and it's to a point where i'm just putting money away just for the fact that you just you just never know you just never know and on top of that some of the technology that this crypto sprays brings is it's very nice and there's a lot of bad headlines, and I feel like uh, when it comes to U.S., man, I feel like crypto is in such a bad, bad spot. Um, just from all the headlines and people not really knowing what the technology is, because I saw an interesting article today, and it's... I'm just reading it. I'm just like, found a lot of things wrong about it. Just for the fact that if you look at money and how it's controlled right now and why we're such in a crazy <laughs> deficit, debt deficit at that, I mean, the system doesn't work, man. You keep printing money. And the value just goes nowhere, man. It goes nowhere. And then you ask yourself, well, why that is? Well, when there's not a finite number and you just keep printing money and there's just so much of it in the world. There's a whole lot of people in the world. Well, how is the value supposed to go up when... The supply of it is unlimited. So that's one perspective you can look at it from. Um, Now you look at the perspective of the fact that, well, Bitcoin, you know, everybody, that's another thing. I'm tired of seeing these headlines of like, oh, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin is money, money laundering. Like, bro, the U.S. and all these other countries money launder all the time, every day, banks do it. Like, 
do y'all not watch some of these like documentaries and do research on what really goes down behind closed doors when it comes to banks and government with the money like like wake up man don't don't be so naive don't be so closed-minded like there's there's things that are happening with our so-called money and it's just like bro it's not going anywhere because it's what the dollar's been in existence for what i think more than 100 years i'm pretty sure so if you look at that whole time you look at the timeline of how long money's been around you look at the value of it it's like bro that sometimes i scratch my head it's like how is it like you got all this but yet the value of it only equals this because you don't even have to have a lot in crypto and i've said this many of numerous times to be somewhat closer to that financial freedom man because at the end of the day that's what i would say some are chasing most are chasing it just depends on your personal preference but when it's all said and done you want things of value things of value is how you can get ahead how you can make more money so if you look at all the things that you have of value and you look at the fact that some of these things that you have in value you don't have necessarily have to have a lot of art is a good example i want to say i've used art before think about it, all these different paintings that are worth all these millions of dollars millions billions i mean whatever the case may be it's worth a lot more than it previous was in the years behind it collector's items like certain coins and all all these different things that have a once again a limited number finite number a number that can't go beyond look at all their values i'm pretty sure right now i could google some famous painting and it would tell me oh if you want to buy this painting it's going to cost you x y and z in most cases it's somewhere in the millions and people are buying it so you don't think people are going to buy crypto too i mean this all these different currencies yeah i know there's there's some there's some bad coins out there there's bad projects out there yeah you, you know there's scams but there's ones that are seriously legit and they're contenders to take some of these companies and the way we live every day and change like i think that's the one thing the u.s government really fears when it comes to cryptocurrency is the fact that it could really change the world and the power balance would not necessarily be all in their hands. That's why I kind of think. Because there's always, oh, the SEC has to do this, these regulations, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crypto's a crime, dog. Y'all, cre- y'all commit crimes every day. Y'all want to keep it 1,000. The government, banks, they commit crimes every day. And they just turn to the cheek like it's no big deal. Why? Because, you know, who who holds them responsible? Themselves. Like, bro, come on. So every time I see, like, bad articles or people trying to, you know, talk down the space, I'm just like, bro, you do your own research, your own homework. I'm sorry, man. The, The technology alone is just way better. I'm talking about some of these different companies, corporations where like they control everything, man. Everything's controlled. So another question you can ask yourself is like, how long do you want to be controlled? You want some freedom? Because they know they say, oh, yeah, you know, banks are looking out for your mo." To be honest, bro, no, no, they're not. And I'm not a big fan of the banks anymore. I mean, I just think there's... A lot of flaws, a lot of things I don't like. I mean, 
I'll give you a prime example. Dude, I, I, I posited some money on what was on Saturday. Saturday? Yeah, Saturday, I think it was. It's over here, about to be Wednesday. Have I received it? Nope. Why? Because, well, Monday is President's Day, so it's a holiday. Like, bro, the fact that banks close and banks are not constantly open, the fact that you constantly can't, like, be able to just have the funds available depending on what type of deposit you make. It's like, bro, it's my money. It's my money. I should have access to, access to it 24-7. Like, no, no questions asked. Like, zero. Shouldn't have to work around the bank schedule. The fact that, you know, like, bro, mo- money's constantly being made. Like, yeah, it don't, it don't stop. There's no sleep button of money. So why is there? So why is your bank not constantly working? If money's constantly working, your bank should be constantly working. That's how I look at it. Because it's like, bro, I mean, sky clear, you know, holiday. That's another thing. That's another thing I don't like about stock markets. There's closing times. It's not open on the holiday. Sorry. Basically saying, hey, today you can't make money. Once again, putting limits. Controlled. Everything's controlled. Can't make money today because it's a holiday. Hmm. But there's money opportunities. But yeah, you want to be close. Mm, I don't know, man. So I'm gonna get off. I'm gonna get off that. Let's get on to this Bitcoin halving. And why is it so important? Why has it been trending? You know, last what weeks or so, days or so. I mean, this is a time where in previous years, in the past that we've seen, we have seen some <laughs> enormous. Enormous gains after the halving. I'm talking about gains where Bitcoin hit this bottom and then its new all time high was something wild. So, in the previous two halvings, <laughs> I don't know if y'all ready for the stat. Bitcoin has soared by at least 2,900%. Twenty nine hundred percent, buddy. So, could you imagine if you just throwing like just enough, like a, a year's salary of uh, you know a solid job where you can survive and not you know be living paycheck. I'm talking like just something that's just you know, hey. You make it 29. 100% on that money. So, that's one thing to take note of, of why there's so much hoopla going around this Bitcoin halving. Because we don't, we don't know what the next soar could be. And I was looking at it no article talking about the Google trends for people searching for Bitcoin halving and it's like whoa. It's like everybody ain't a mom is like, all right, let's figure out what's going on. So it's like, hmm. What are we gonna see in these next two to four months? I would say by the end of summer, we're going to see what type of impact this next Bitcoin halving could have. So, take some notes, find those coins, and man, throw a little something, something if you choose. If you choose. 
because the potential return on it, it's like, mm, it's very juicy. And, oh boy, everybody and they mama got something to say about the halving and how it's attracting all this FOMO. Because I ain't gonna lie, there's a lot of FOMO going on right now just for the fact that, man, Bitcoin has shot, what was it, 5% today? Like, bro, if you want to short and long Bitcoin now, it's like, if you're watching the market constantly, you can easily make some some gains. And I've been working on that as well, uh, using this exchange called uh, BitOffer. Uh, doing some margin trading without the necessary fear of liquidation, since there is no liquidation on that particular platform. But, man... I should went with my gun instinct too, because the Bitcoin had dropped, what was it? I think like 96, 97, then boom. That bad boy shot up something crazy. And I probably would have easily made like what? Five. And actually, no. I think I would have made like maybe eight or nine percent. Just for that, that little just run right there. Yeah. You, could you imagine? I could have made nine, ten percent within like a. What? I wouldn't even say I could. Yeah, like about a day. Cause what happened? It. Do do do. Shut up. Well, of course I didn't go with my gut feeling, so I missed out on that. But when it comes to these other prices, these other coins, there's small time highs where I'm just like, you know what? Let's stock in right now. Right now. Because, I mean, especially some of these, that's funny, some of these penny stocks. Penny stocks, stocks that are not under a dollar. You could just, oh, potentials there. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, even though Tron's been slowly just been just chilling at this two cent mark. Part of me wants to just say, you know what, I want, I got those money. Because what, what if it does go back to not just this all-time high, but what happens if it hits a dollar? Just what happens? So I'm just like, you know what? I might just say, screw it and try to get like, I want to say at least 50,000 Tron. I think that's going to be my goal. And to get that, it's only a rack. Right now, this current price. So, a rack to, to get potentially turned to 50K. Like, bro, like, that's just. That's if it's a dollar. Shit, man. I'm just like, bro. Tron ain't the only token that's under a dollar, though. Cardano, Stellar. I remember uh, what was it? EOS was like at two dollars for a minute. Guess what's at? It was at like five bucks of a day. I mean, IOTA still chilling under a dollar. Ontology, man, Ontology's been a great coin to invest in. I got in around like the what fifty cent mark, I believe. And that bad boy has shot up to like a dollar. So I basically turned like 40 bucks into like almost, what, 85, 86 bucks in like a two month span. And the funny part about ontology is, I should say funny part, but I'm collecting ONG just just by holding that token. So, um, and the all time high, y'all ready for this for ontology? Ten dollars. <laughs> All time low was back in twenty eighteen of forty three cents. And now these are stats coin to coin to market cap dot com. That's what I'm currently looking at right now. But man, ten dollars? Shoot. I got eighty of those. So you're trying to tell me I could flip forty to eight hundred. I mean 
Not to mention, like I said, you are collecting ONG as well. So you're collecting dividends. Those good old dividends. Neo is another uh, token that I need to get back on because, man, it's at $15. And, I, and if you guys remember the the good days where Neo was like what two hundred dollars hundred dollars uh yeah i mean the all-time high was 196 it's only 15 bucks right now so again there's just when it comes to bitcoin and all these different coins like when they all f rise especially when it comes to bitcoin i mean they all rise i mean Ontology's gas was once upon a time at four bucks and fifty nine cents, and I'm almost at two of those, and I don't even hold that much Ontology, but I've been using my O3 wallet, and I've been you know slowly but surely just collecting ONG that slow grind. Like right now I'm looking at my Ontology and it's worth what seventy four dollars. <laughs> Again, folks, I bought this in December. Uh, like like I said, the forty four bucks range, December, folks. Right now it's February. Yeah, put that in perspective. So yeah, and now I'm almost at two O and G. Told you guys, two. I'm almost at two. I'm, so that means I would be basically at what thirty four cents. <clears throat> Come on, bro. Thirty four cents. Just chilling, collecting. On that slow grind. Constantly. It's constantly doing something. That's the perspective I look at it at. Is the fact that money's constantly coming in. I don't care. If it's a dollar, five dollars. The fact that this is going to be coming in. For until as long as I live and... <laughs> long as crypto doesn't go anywhere like um, it's just in the background every day slowly but surely and then obviously i'm gonna put you know more money into natology try to figure out you know what what's the amount you put into almost get one ong a day because just for the fact that if ontology gas goes back to four bucks i'm just getting one of those every day like bruh Come on, man. Do the math. Do the numbers, folks. The potential for some of these coins is just, ah. It is very mouthwatering. It's to a point where I'm just trying to figure out, like, okay. How do I collect them all? But the portfolio is looking nice, man. I, I, I got a lot of different coins. I'm going to continue to get all these different coins. You just never know. Spread out the wealth. I mean, the, the portfolio I'm looking at right now, it's up 2% today. Some real light. Chilling. Nothing too crazy. But, I mean, if you look on it, I mean, I have, what, over at least, I would say, eight different coins. But at the same time, if I had to say, like, the amounts, bigger amounts are in, like, uh, MCO, of course, Bitcoin, some stash tokens, uh, Stellar. Ontology, mm. Ethereum's getting bigger. I should say that. I would like to get some more Tezos. I've been pretty impressed with them, and you also do get staking rewards for that coin as well. So that's that's another thing. Um, I'm gonna say I've mentioned that before. Is I'm just trying to find all the different coins that make me money. 
get as much as those as possible. Like just stack up on those, because some of those you go to your all time highs. They go to their all time highs, I should say, and you're a millionaire off top. Off top, easily, easily. That's why I said, like, yo, some of these man. These bottoms that they're at right now, or these lows, these super lows, on sale type of lows, yeah, gotta take advantage. And it's to a point where now I'm like trying to collect a lot more from my vault and just pretend like it's not not there, and then like come back to it like in seven months and be like, oh look how much money's in there, how much money is that? Like that's. That's something I want. I'm gonna come back to my portfolio in about seven, eight months and be like, whoa. That's a whole lot of funds. And they're all mine. So again, these next couple of months, two months, man, are gonna be big. And I'm hoping that I'm hoping that we found a bottom because I do know that when it comes to the halving, it's hit some serious bottoms. Um, and then people were wondering, you know, well, will transaction fees go up? I don't think they necessarily will. And this halving is going to continue to happen until 2040, which is the last year of Bitcoin's being mined into existence. And the halving does happen over every four years as well. Um, and then, like I said, May, man. Oh, May is going to be. May could be. May can go in a couple of ways. May could go somewhere so crazy to a point where it's like, oh, man. Like, if you ain't got no Bitcoin or any money in crypto, sheesh, you could miss out on some. Easy wins, easy gains, and it's funny too. A lot of people have been comparing uh, the month of January to some of its earlier days of when Bitcoin had a, you know a significant gain in a month. Um, I know that particular month it started at, it started at around like seventy two. Hundred. Um, this is the data by Coin Market Cap. Cause I'm looking at the chart, and it finished with basically almost like the nine four hundred mark, which is a gain of more than thirty <laughs> percent. The last time this happened was in twenty thirteen, where it had a freaking fifty four point five, fifty four point fifty percent rally. Oh my goodness. Um, but of course, you know, you have seen those crazy price drops in months. Um, I remember, what was it? It was one month, I think Bitcoin had dropped like, man, like 30, 40%. But for those that were smart, got out at a certain point and just waited for the price to go complete to the bottom which takes some serious patience and I can speak from experience because there's been times where I've gotten burned by that crazy dip but like it but again you live and you learn so now I make better decisions and go into stable coins when it's having those crazy dips trying to figure out okay where is the bottom so I don't know man all I know is Where does Bitcoin go from here? Like, can Bitcoin hit 11 in the next month? Like, what's the direction going to go? Is it going down or is it going to go up? Because, again, May is, May is around the corner. So that's why I'm just like, ooh-wee. Let's go, man. This is exciting.
I am watching all my coins like a dog. I mean, uh, Ethereum. It's almost at $300. I think it was at like one twenty one forty for the longest. Litecoin. Oh, I love Litecoin. Monero's getting creepy to that $100 mark. I mean, hmm. It's just. It's a lot of coins, man. There's. They have potential. Like I said, you just gotta. Do your research and find the ones you like. I know one thing Stellar. I gotta get more Stellar. That thing was really almost at a dollar at a point in time. It's seven cents, man. Like, come on. Like I said, man, the the data don't lie. That's why you got to do your research on it. Figure it out. Find the find the good spots to get in. Hodl. And then just patiently wait to. Because the rise is the fun part. I'm not going to lie to you. I have a couple of different shades that I trade on right now. And like. I had put in at certain price marks and I'm just like, oh, now when the market goes up, I'm just like, oh, I'm like the biggest fan. I'm like a cheerleader. Just like, oh, go, go, go. Because there's, there's certain prices or certain movements where I'll be like, you know what? Let's go ahead. Take the profit out right here. Take that profit. Move it over here. Move it over there. Like I said, man, you, you, you live and you learn. You get better. I would have never thought I'd been this much invested into trading and investing. I had the thought, the thought was there, but actually doing it, totally different thing. But this is gonna wrap it up for this episode of the Crypto Millionaire Journey, man. Again, it's your boy, the host, Wolf of Crypto. I hope you guys are enjoying the content. Got some more coming out for you. It's a lot of different projects. And when it comes to trading, I think I'm currently trading between like what, uh, what about five to six different exchanges. The reason or some of the reason why is because, well, some of these ones that I use are zero fees zero commission. So all my profits I get, all those gains are mine. And then there's other ones where I have a trading robot. So that one does trades for me. So I do a little bit of both. I personally do it myself. I also have a robot where I follow signals and all that good money. But until the next time I join in and talk about crypto, man, because crypto is, I keep trying to tell people, Crypto will change my life. It's changed my life now. In small ways, but yet I see the big picture. I see the long, long run picture. And that picture is very uh, I'm trying to think of a word of how I could describe it. I would say Jubilee, but it's like it's scary, I feel like. Because we're talking about going from being like a thousandaire to being a millionaire within a couple of year freight or time rate time frame. This is very doable because I had seen somebody's tweet and it was just, oh, it had me thinking like, wait, what? I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if I can find. And actually, now nah, I'm not gonna. I don't think I'm gonna be able to find that quickly, as I would like to. But basically, to sum it up, it was saying that if you had invested, I think it was was it a thousand or fifty thousand, you would have made. 
this much and then somebody had brought the point of the fact that if you've been just putting like not even a lot that's a thing like that thread I think it was a thread it was insane and just had me thinking like man you put in enough you could be a millionaire within the crypto space like in a two two year time frame two years why because the gains that you can make are just they're pretty wild man like godlike i feel like that's the best vivid description i can give of the gains that you can make within the space i mean you heard me say it earlier Bitcoin has soared over 2,900% in the last two albums. You just got to take 2,900% and times that with whatever number you're comfortable putting into the space. So, I'm going to do you one example. Let's just say you put in 30 racks. At that percentage, you're talking about eight hundred and seventy thousand dollars a little a little over 200 racks from being a millionaire actually sorry scratch that my bad my math is bad under 150 it's 130 you're at mil off top Bruh, two years. Put that in perspective, please. That is OD. And guess who has that mindset right now? Yep, you bet. You, you bet. Believe it, the host. Your boy, the kid. I'm trying to be a crypto millionaire in two years, B. Come on, bruh. 30 racks isn't even a lot. Think about it. It's not a lot. Shoot, that might be my freaking current job salary with this boo boo ass 15 an hour. In two years? Come on, man. That's insane. And the funny part about it is. When it hits that point, you if you really wanted to, you could just say, screw it, I'm going to sell it all. Profit it and do whatever you feel like. But like I said, it's going to get to a point where it's like, man, the next new all-time high, you could, you could seriously be a millionaire. Overnight type thing. Because if you're around that space during that time where it was really making people overnight millionaires, that could be you. I know it's going to be me. <clears throat> Not even trying to be cocky or anything like that. I just, I'm just heavily involved in the space and I know there's, that's another thing. Not everything, not everything that you obtain when it comes to crypto, you don't have to always pay for it. So that's like another reason why I'm in the space as well. Because like, yeah, you can invest, which invest helps a lot more quickly, obviously. But there's some platforms, some currencies, cryptocurrencies. Like, bro, you you can just earn from being a part, just being a user. So all that crypto that you're earning, yo, that could be your bag right there and that's all what it's all return on your that's on your investment which is in those cases time you don't have a lot of it you gotta maximize the time that you have right now Whew. I might I might have hit y'all with a couple bars before I get, get out of here I'm not gonna cap to you but that's gonna do it folks Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. 
I'm, I'm hoping y'all, hoping y'all learn something, man. I really am, because I enjoy talking about crypto, as you guys can tell, and I can talk about it all day, every day. And y'all can catch the podcast, of course, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public. The cast is everywhere. Make sure y'all check out the YouTube channel as well, The Wolf of Crypto. I got a plethora of videos. So we're going to wrap it up with some lasso. Some new new. I got some real new new for y'all. I got. I just know I have some unreleased new new that you probably won't hear for a while. So I'm giving you a little sneak peek, man. Because he's up next, too. I'm telling y'all, 2020 is going to be a great year. Started off rough. RP with my guy Kobe. But a mama mentality, bro. That, it lives on. And we going to get it. Y'all going to come get it with me as well. I'm the Wolf of Crypto. Peace, y'all.